artifacts. The brick sent him to look into possible theft. Hardly a job for unit. The third Doctor adventures. Hello, is anyone there? Can you hear me? Over. Is that the Doctor? Hostiles detected. Big finish. Recreating an era. Hello and welcome YouTubers and Doctor Who fanatics to another Big Finish Order review. And today I'll be reviewing quite an anticipated Big Finish release with the third Doctor coming back with a bang as he is quite underused on Big Finish but it's nice he's getting a big release. Which is the third Doctor Adventures Volume 1 featuring Prisoners of the Lake and the Havoc of Empires which stars Tim Trollope playing the magnificent third Doctor. Katie Manning as Joe Grant and Richard Franklin as Captain Mike Yates. So if you want to go straight to my review of this set and don't want to see how it is showcased, then there's the time on the bottom of the screen to the review. If you have or haven't skipped, then let's begin the video. So for the front cover, we have the third Doctor at front with an explosion behind him because he is back with a band to big finish. Richard Franklin playing Captain Mike Yates. Joe Grant, we have the spaceship from the Havoc of Empires, New Harmony with the TARDIS by there, a nice little light effect by there. And we can lightly see the third Doctor's intro blurred within the cover. And by here, this may be the interior of the New Harmony space station and a stone walkway from the prisoners of the lake. And we have the standard stuff showcasing it has two full cast audio dramas, showcasing them both by here. And it's pretty unusual that they didn't use the normal third Doctor picture as we have by here so that's a bit odd i don't mind it but i was thinking why did they not use the normal one and also we have a signature by jamie robertson who did the music on the havoc of empires so here we have the side what it looks like on your shelf the third doctor picture by there full cast audio drama then the name of the set we're number one hopefully we'll get a second set as it has been teased with the big finish logo and then we have the back the format has changed since uh, 2015 for like special releases. It has like the front cover showcased by there a little bit and then the name of the set. Then we had The Prisoners of the Lake and the Havoc of Empires written by Justin Richards, written by Andy Lane and directed by Nicholas Briggs with a bio on each of them which I'll place in the description down below. And the running time is 300 minutes of prox including both the stories and behind the scenes and no music unfortunately. And then we open up, we are presented with the five discs and then the leaflet. It's designed a little bit different now as you can get that piece of paper out very easily so it opens like so like that. So we have part one and part two then part three and part four Prisoners of the Lake. You can flip it over if you desire if you want the actual third Doctor's logo so this is very easy to take out which is quite nice. As on the other ones it was a real pain to get out. Then we have part one and part two Part 3 and Part 4 of the Havoc of Empires. Yeah, I forgot to put the disc back into the case. It was left in my laptop. And then when we take the disc out, we have advertisements for Companion Chronicle releases. And for the leaflets, we have production credits. And then you may also enjoy the Mega. And then Doctor Who magazine. And then cast list for each of the characters. For supporting characters in the Prisoners of the Lake. And Havoc of Empires, and then the main cast up there. So that was the third Doctor Adventures Volume 1 showcase. Now to my review, starting with Prisoners of the Lake by Justin Richards. Now, to my review of Prisoners of the Lake by Justin Richards. And honestly, if I have to be honest, this was the story I was most looking forward to about the set. Now, that would become a big shocker for many, as Havoc of Empires was hyped up the most, and out of the set is the most loved one. By a vast majority of people, they prefer the Havoc of Empires. The reason why I was looking forward to Prisoners of the Lake more, it felt like it was capturing more of the Third Doctor's era. And what I like about the Third Doctor's era is the earthbound storytelling and the action perk where the Third Doctor we all love. And that had that in the Prisoners of the Lake, but not really the Havoc of Empires, as I was told. So I was leaning towards Prisoners of the Lake. And I know Justin Richards has talent, he's proved it. Sometimes he has his off days, everyone does. No one's perfect. But yeah, a lot more people, I guess, prefer Andy Lane. As I know, he's done some really good classic stories, such as the pilot episode for Jacob and Lightfoot series and whatnot. He's done a lot of good stuff for Big Finish. Now to the opening summary of the story, it has a prologue scene, which has Captain Mike Yates, played by the wonderful Richard Franklin, investigating disappearances of alien artifacts from an archaeological dig 
down below Dunstanton Lake. Yeah, it's a very nice uh, prologue scene, I gotta say, right away, with this team going down under the lake, and they discover this ancient structure deep below the lake. Definitely has a nice feeling of the Troughton Second Doctor era base under siege. And a bit like Doctor Who and the Silurian, so I like that because that is a fantastic story. So yeah, it has a very nice prologue scene with Captain Mark Yates and his team going down into the ancient structure. So that was the opening summary for Prisoners of the Lake, now to my in-depth review. Then characters and performances, my final verdict, and then I'll move on to the Havoc of Empires, do the same thing with that story. And then overall verdict on the set. So let's begin my review of Prisoners of the Lake. So for part one, we do immediately have narration by Tim Trellor. Now I want to get this out of the way first. It's, it's a big thing with this set, as it's been rather negative with reviewers and big Finnish fans and whatnot. And yeah, it is a problem here. I like narration. I have no problem about it. But here, yeah, it is a problem. I have to admit. But in the Yes Men, it's like totally brilliant, really well integrated, and it feels like a part of the story. Here. It does, and I've got three strikes, three negatives for this narration. Strike one is that Tim Trailer doesn't do his third Doctor impression like in this narration. He does it with the Doctor very well, but not with his narration. He just talks normally, and it doesn't feel right. It feels so jarring and out of place, and I don't like that at all. Second strike, it feels disjointed. It doesn't feel integrated or embedded well within... The story, like the Yes Man, so yeah, it feels really disjointed. And for the third strike, the narration didn't even need to be in it. I can see this set working without narration. As it's used quite limited, really. Not as much as the Yes Man. So I can see this working without it. Three strikes of the narration. It's not good in this set. It just feels like it's literally just slapped on by the editor and that was it. It just feels so much in your face. I wouldn't say it's so distracting that you just cannot listen to the audio. No, it's not that bad. But in places, it does sort of bug you. It's not so distracting you just want to turn off the audio. It's not that bad. But it could have worked without it, or they could have done a lot better. So yeah, that's my opinions on the narration. It's not that good. It could have been a lot better like the Yes Man, as it was perfect in that release. And it feels absolutely terrible compared to the Yes Man's narration quality. Anyway, after that is done and dusted and out of the way, let's move on to the let's move on to the actual story. Yeah, I do love the introduction scene with the prologue when they go under the water to the ancient structure. And Captain Mike Yates seems to get along very well with Frida, who's quite of a main supporting character of this uh, story. So I was going to say box set. Yes, yeah, story. That's that's quite nice. It's a nice prologue, it sets up the main supporting characters, what Captain Mikey Yates would be doing. And it sort of teases me that this is going to be a really nice base under siege story, something like Doctor Who and the Silorians, for example. Now for Tim Trello's impression of the third Doctor, and I have to say, he does the third Doctor voice very well. Yeah, I can see that John Pertwee's voice will be very tricky to master, it's not something as easy like the fourth Doctor, for example, Pertwee. It is a lot more, you have to capture his grandness, he has a very grand voice. And yeah, Tim Trello does well. I am happy with his go of the third Doctor, I think it's good. But practice makes perfect, you can always improve. And he doesn't really capture the grandness of the third Doctor. You need to capture that grand voice and he would do the third Doctor very well. He just needs to go up that extra level and do that. But he's not yet mastering that, I would say. Yeah, it's not perfect, but always room for improvement all the time. Oh yeah, the third Doctor and Joe get some nice dialogue with each other, and it feels like it's very late with Joe's timeline with the Doctor, say around about Season 10 area, as it feels like they have a very strong friendship, and Joe Grant very educated in science, as the Doctor has been teaching her. And also great music score by Nicholas Briggs on this one as well, Feels it really belongs in the Pertwee era. Yeah, I would say this story starts up quite well with the setting up, with sporting characters and whatnot, with the Doctor and Joe going to Dunstanton Lake. I quite like Frieda's character, had some nice dialogue between 
Joe Grant and the Doctor. She was, uh, I would say, the main supporting character in this one. So you gotta like her, really. And yeah, I liked her in this one. Yeah, I gotta say, part one seems like the flyby like no tomorrow. It's got great speed and energy. Nothing fantastic just yet, but it's nice what's going on. It's got a great setup. And it does want you to continue straight away to part two. So that's the good thing in this. It wants you to continue. So yeah, part one, it sets up very nicely with interesting supporting characters and something called the Prosecutor, which is inside this ancient structure. Now to part two, this does capture a lot of different styles of the Third Doctor's era. But this is where the Third Doctor becomes a really action side Doctor. I love it where he fights off the Prosecutor in this one. It's a stone golem and yet he fights off a stone golem because Pertwee... The third Doctor is that badass. Yeah, unfortunately he doesn't do any of that in the Havoc of Empires, but I just love him in this one. The action side, really just getting into the action. And yeah, he is really good dealing with the Prosecutor and the Draston. And I'll get to them shortly. And yeah, part two, we begin the base of the siege storytelling, and I just absolutely loved it. As they were trapped down in this ancient structure, with no way of getting the lift down. And Redford's, um, another character called Redford's, his suit is malfunctioning. Yeah, Redford's character unfortunately wasn't used too much as he was mainly just trapped in the sea with his suit malfunction. That's where his character ended up going. So he didn't do too much. He's rather just trapped in a malfunctioning suit. It didn't seem like Justin Richards didn't really know what to do with him, so they just stuck him under the the lake in a malfunctioning suit. So yeah, he wasn't really of a interesting character. And also, Captain Yates isn't really in the action of this one. He's doing something else. It would have been good if he was in the ancient structure with the Doctor and Joe. But no, he's doing something else. He is rather out of the way with the first half. He gets in it a bit more during the second half, which is good. He's used well, not as limited or underused, such as the Defectors, for example. He was rather pushed away and underused in that one. After a while, the story does become more wider with all the characters doing something else. The Doctor is doing something else. Captain Mikey Yates is doing another thing with uh, the ancient artifacts. And Joe is still trapped in the ancient structure with Frida. Yeah, the Doctor and Captain Mikey Yates are on the surface trying to confirm his theory with previous audio lock tapes. It doesn't show the big threat, the Drastons, just yet. But we do see what they're capable of in these recording devices. And Joe and Frida witness like this monitor showing civilizations being massacred, cities burning and planets exploding by this really great built up threat which is the Drastons. And you really want them to get into the story so badly. They could have entered the story about five minutes earlier they take a little bit too long. We get some fantastic and fascinating back history on them. Of what they're capable of. But we, I just wanted them five minutes earlier. Just a little niggle. But I can live with it. And yeah, the cliffhanger approaches. I would say the cliffhangers are standard. It's nothing... I would say of a highlight of the story. But yeah, when it continues, the plot becomes a lot more wider. So that's a good thing. Got some brilliant build-up. The threat is really getting to the gear, we just want to see them awake now. And Frida is a good supporting character with nice interactions with Joe and the Doctor. And yes, yeah, sometimes Joe does need reassurance from the Doctor as she panics quite a lot on this one. When she's trapped down in the ancient structure and the Doctor tells her to calm down and that. Really nice scenes with the Doctor being a gentleman as he is, keeping Joe Grant very calm. Feels like some really nice warm loving scenes so I like that. Yeah part two is good it flows nicely it does. It doesn't have huge big twists or turns but great story so far. Now to part three we get a bit more on the Drastons now. Not introduced as a threat just yet but still having a bit more from the prosecutor now. But we do get a picture of what they look like of these really big dog or wolf humanoids. And yet at least they're not werewolves just like the Red House ones, thank god for that. 
And the Doctor knows about the race, the Drastons, to be a really murderous race. And again, some really nice back history with them. I like that. And yeah, in the second half, the Prosecutor does play a different role from his first half. Yeah, I gotta say, what's happening with Redford is pretty damn tedious. He is still trapped in his suit. In part three, which happened in part one, with his suit malfunctioning. That could have been dealt with far more quicker. He was trapped for so long and his character was nothing important. Either get him out quicker or kill him off. Yeah, Captain Mike Yates gets into the story quite a bit now with his missing artifacts. Interesting scenes with the director and Yates himself. Yeah, the director, his character is very predictable. An obvious subplot with him, then sort of adds to the main plot a little bit. Yeah, interesting directions with the director, with his motives. As I said, quite predictable, I found it. But it does have other twists during this time. I gotta say, they were covered up better. Yeah, the Undersea story time does go backwards and forwards during part two and part three. Because they, there are some scenes now on the surface, so taking a break from all that. Because I was worried that the whole story would just be in this one location as it would lack variety. But no, it does have some scenes and some plot things happening above on the surface. So it would have been a little bit dull if it was all underground and nothing on the surface. So yeah, has a nice bit of variety, which is nice. Yeah, part three at the end unleashes the threat. Made part four in a really good position right now. As I said, the draft stones could have entered about five minutes earlier. But still, I can live with it. Although, this might be an error on this release. If it was a bug or a glitch or it was on all the releases. But with the cliffhanger, the Doctor and Captain Mike Yates face off the draft stones. But then when it cuts to the cliffhanger track, where it plays uh, the outro... It then plays a little bit of Frida and Joe Grant screaming. And it feels you know, it's out of place because they weren't even in the same room as the Doctor or Captain Mikey Yates. That might have been a bug or an error. Which the editing team done, but I can't confirm that as my disc might have had a problem. Now to part four. And yeah, even though they were a bit late introduced, the Drastons were very well portrayed. And I like their ringleader, which is the Draston Chief. And sounds pretty scary and like very aggressive and feral monsters. Frida, the main supporting character, does make her move to blow up this structure. Even though she does make quite a bit of sense that it would be dangerous not the Drastons to escape from the structure. Joe doesn't want Frida to do this, but Frida talks a little bit aggressively, too aggressively. And I didn't really like that side of her. She was good during the earlier parts, but their her tone of character just really changed, like in an instant. And I just didn't like that. She just becomes extremely indignant to Joe, and it and she feels like she was way out of character during those final stages. But that's just me. Now to characters and performances: Tim Trailer, the Doctor, and the narrator. Yeah, Tim does a good job with the third Doctor, as I said. I can picture him very well, just needs to capture his grandness. And you know my opinions on the narration. Joe Grant did a lot in this one, answered the story quite a bit, especially when she's in the base. And nice dialogue between the Doctor and Joe, that's very nice indeed. Then Captain Mike Yates, first half he was rather in the distance, part three enters like a subplot sort of thing with the alien artifacts, that was quite nice. And then in part four he was with the Doctor, and with the Prosecutor and the Drastons was very good. Never supporting characters, I would say they're alright. Nothing rememberable, I would say. But alright nonetheless. We have Frida, Caroline Seymour. I liked her in the first half. Nice interactions with Joe, but in the last ending scenes, I thought she was way out of character and extremely annoying and indignant to Joe. Now for our versatile voice actors, we have Robbie Stevens and John Banks. Robbie Stevens voices Redford, a pointless character, the director and the prosecutor. And the director was predictable where he goes, and an alright character. And the prosecutor, yeah, I like the prosecutor, I did. He was quite a lot of fun, the stone golem. And then finally, we have John Banks voicing the Draston Chief. Very good, a lieutenant, which I cannot remember his name. I think it was just named 
lieutenant and that was it. And then a unit operative and that's all he did. He did very well with the Draston Chief, very scary stuff. A really intimidating voice. Now what is my final verdict on Prisoners of the Lake? Yeah, it's a really good story, Liz. It's not fantastic, but yeah, I liked it, I did. It was a very nice story. Feels based on the siege, and that's a good element for me, as I love based on the siege storytelling. It feels a lot like Doctor Who and the Silurians and the Green Death when they're trapped within a certain place. It captures the Earthbound third Doctor Pertwee style. Very good, it does. And on second listen, I think I enjoyed it even more. I think my first listen, I gave it a 7.5. But on my second listen, yeah, I would give it an 8. Well done to Justin Richards. He did a good story. Well, not one of his best, but still a great story nonetheless. And I very much enjoyed it. Now to the second story of the set, The Havoc of Empires by Andy Lane. Now to my review of The Havoc of Empires. Empires and uh, all right I don't know what it was with this one but I found it extremely difficult to get into this one it took me three attempts and this was the reason why this review was delayed was the havoc of empires I'm not sure why I couldn't get into this one with three attempts so it took me a fourth attempt to fully get through it and did I like it on my fourth attempt? Well, that's what you're going to find out. Now, Prisoners of the Lake captures the action-packed third Doctor we all know and love. Now, this one is a political scandal up in space, something like Frontier in Space or the Paladin stories. A huge majority of people love this story. It gets a 9 out of 10 and a few 10s. You're going to see if I agree with this. Now, to the summary of the story, the Doctor takes Joe and Captain Yates. Well, actually... The Doctor was supposed to take them to a cricket game, but no, that wasn't it. The Doctor takes Joe and Yates to a space station known as New Harmony. And now what happens here is a diplomatic political scandal with different factions and races and species. And they're really going to go at each other's throats, and it could bring a space war. So yeah, if you like uh, stories like Frontier in Space, the Paladon ones, or even the Mutants... Someone's got to give it some love. Yeah, if you love those stories, political scandals and all that, then you should like this one. So then, let's begin my in-depth review, part one to part four. So let's begin. So the part one, yeah, as I said, I found this story tricky to get into with my three attempts. I just keep trailing off. I just couldn't concentrate and engage to the story. And I just had other big finished stories in my mind which I wanted to listen to over this one, so that's not very good, that isn't. But yeah, I finally had in my head that I'll put Havoc of Empires on. Tim Trana does sound like he has improved on his third Doctor from the previous story. Feels like he's capturing the right tone, still he needs to catch his grandness to the third Doctor. He's close, but still improvements are needed. Yeah, part one is basically the whole thing is a setup. It's going to get you familiar with the setting of New Harmony, the station, and with this marriage of an alien leader and a human director. Now we have an introduction of a supporting character. I'm going to give an award to this character, possibly the most annoying character I have ever listened to on an audio. She was whiny, she was moany, and it's crazy how repetitive her dialogue is. And I thought the constant screaming in the abandoned was annoying. She feels so self-centred. That's why she's such an annoying character with a bad attitude. And she keeps talking about a damn reputation. And already she sounds extremely repetitive. So yeah, that's my opinions on Mel Zalek, which is the wedding arranger. Oh dear me. I do like the multiple factions and species here to celebrate. The wedding, like the Kalnoth being a warlike race. Something similar like the Draconians or the Ice Warriors being honourable and the Doctor respects them. So a race like that. They're quite a nice race, I like them. And yeah, the characters are split up with the Doctor being rather the gentleman, meeting and chatting with all the other species around the space station. And then we have Joe Grant with Lewis Markow going through security procedures. As Well, she's going to be playing a very interesting role, Joe Grant. Yeah, for part one, as I said, basically the whole thing is a setup until the cliffhanger. 
And that's where the story kicks into gear. So yeah, part one was good. It wasn't brilliant. A bit mediocre at this point. So I was wanting this story to build up. And yeah, I believe Havoc of Empires was released free on the Big Finish newsletter. And yeah, it wasn't really that good. I would have preferred if it was the other one, to be honest. For Prisoners of the Lake Part 1. Now to Part 2 now. It feels like Joe is very late in her time now. Maybe quite close to Frontier in Space, maybe? As now Joe really likes to speak her own mind, even if the Doctor disagrees with what Joe is going to be doing. She sounds quite independent as a person and sometimes likes to go over the barrier and do what she wants. So that's quite interesting for a character. It really does branch out Joe Grant's character. Yeah, during part two, it's a bit like Bam Bam a Boom, really. It turns out a bit of a mystery of who did it. Such as in Bam Bam a Boom, there was a murder. and this one, there was a ship being destroyed by a bomb. And then this is really where the political scandal kicks in as they have to try and calm down both factions as a potential war may happen. We do have something quite odd turn up in this story with giant monsters like Atto Eels, I believe they're called. And I never saw a mystery links to them of why they're even there, the Atto Eels. But it's actually not very interesting of why they're actually there. And soon gets resolved in about 30 seconds of why they're there. So that didn't really go anywhere. That felt a bit pointless, that did. It feels like a mystery was coming back. Oh, why are the Atto Eels there? Oh, 30 seconds later, there's the answer. Anyway, the characters do a fair bit in this one, all the main cast. With Joe being quite clever to avoid suspicion and tell Mike Yates to do something else to stay out of the way. So yeah, Joe Grant is quite clever in this one. And yeah, as I said, playing quite a big role as a security consultant. As the Doctor and Joe are trying to sort out about this bombing and Yates is uh, checking up on the Kalnoff and uh, the Incorporation. Yeah, as I said, Joe Grant is clever using her intelligence, but still... I think she does underestimate other people when she's in this stage of authority, such as the AI. As well, the AI computer system sort of tricks her in a way. And yeah, she gets a little bit overconfident with her authority, I would say. Because she, she's in a big like, leadership sort of role, and she takes it a bit too far. But anyway, uh, Joe Grant really does get into gear with this story. It has a nice centre role in this one, playing a security consultant. And it seems quite starstruck when she's... Like saying like a, a speech to everyone within the station. I'm basically playing the character as Alex Filton's role within this story. But something happens to him. Yeah, part two is better than part one. Still opens up a few more doors within the story and a plot reveal. Yeah, this part is still a bit mediocre with the story. I wasn't really engaged with it. But what was going on well, which I was engaged with, was Joe Grant's character being rather branched out. That was a really good thing. Story is mediocre to me. I just keep losing my concentration on it. Now, part three, and I will say the second half of Havoc of Empires is a improvement over the first half. The second half, the story was a lot more wider now. More things were happening. It was a little bit more interesting. Yeah, unfortunately, I just found the first half mediocre. I just wasn't connected with the story. You do find out a bit more about the ship exploding and who did it. But yeah, I can't really explain this really, but if they do tell who did it, then the Doctor and Joe and Mike Yates will be in trouble as imposters. You have to really listen to the story to get that. I do have another negative now, and this is about the second half, is with this build-up of the species at war, it felt really thin, and I was hoping for like an ultimate clash, maybe big leaders go against each other and shout against one another, but we don't really get that, and it's a big shame. It's a political scandal, you've got to have leaders shouting at each other, but we don't have it here, and it's underwhelming. Yeah, I wanted these two species to really have a go at one another, but unfortunately we don't get that. But yeah, we do have the Atto eels really get into the story now, as we do have like a scene with them in part two but they weren't really a focusing point but now they are as they escaped yeah part three was an improvement over the first half yet still not very impressed with the story i wasn't looking to give it a nine out of ten and no way a ten however part three did feel like it was doing part four quite a lot 
had some nice build up to part 4 so that was quite nice and there's really going to be a big havoc on this ship now. Still we don't really know the real perpetrator just yet. Nevo two of the species going against each other and really arguing at each other but we have the Atawheels breaking free and then causing chaos. Yeah the third Doctor gets into the story now didn't do absolutely anything in part 3 because something happened to him. That's the direction of the story. Now we see the third Doctor using guns now, as he doesn't really like guns, but he says he will use them if he needs to. Yeah, the resolution of the story is pretty good. I was impressed with the resolution. It was not too bad, it wasn't. It talks about like government greed, corruption, and profit over actual life. So that was quite good. Yeah, part four was definitely the best part out of the set. Still nothing incredible, I gotta say. And it I think it ends quite abruptly to the ones responsible for the incident and I didn't see them punished or anything it felt so abrupt they were targeted and then we just go straight to the wedding reception thing and it feels abrupt now we have characters and performances starting with the doctor Tim Trollor does a lot better in this one as the doctor I gotta say still some improvements are needed but yeah still he's good then he's like taking the back seat in part 3 and then getting into the story back again in part 4. Next up is Joe Grant. Fantastic performances by Joe Grant. I would say her best performance in an audio so far. Very strong. Playing a really good leader approach now which we haven't really seen a lot. And then Mike Yates. Yeah it's great to see him travelling in the TARDIS for the first time and away from Earth. We have a story like outside of Earth so that's yeah, always nice to see. Now for supporting characters, I won't dive too much into them because there's a mystery behind one of them to be the killer. We have Helen Godwin voicing May Zalek, the wedding coordinator, and Harmony Station AI. The wedding coordinator was extremely annoying, I don't like her character whatsoever. And she makes a really stupid and pointless tribe attack noise during part 4. It was utterly pointless and stupid, I hated that moment. That was utterly crap, pointless, and a stupid character. And yeah, she did her alright with the Harmony Station AI. Next one is Hailey Morgan, who voices two characters, Regent Fowler, who is the one getting married to the human leader, and Alex Filton. Yeah, they were both good characters. They were Alex Filton, something happens to him, and then Joe Grant takes the front role as the leader of the station, which is quite a nice security consultant. Next character is Tina Anderson, Lucy Briggs Owen. Yeah, good character, who is the leader of the humans, and the one who's getting married to Fowler. Yeah, there's some nice storytelling by there. Next up is Lady Gullen by Joanna Bacon. Not a bad character, not a strong focusing character either. Good what she's given. And then lastly we have Lewis Marks and Human Guard, which was voiced by George Layton. And they were just essentially background characters. So then, overall, what did I think about the Havoc of Empires? Well, I have to say I was disappointed with this one. It didn't impress me. And it didn't give me a wow factor, a 9 out of 10 or over, which most people rate this story. And in my personal opinion, I find this one overrated. I, it's a bit mediocre. It just doesn't engage me or interest me at all. The only thing which was really good about this one was Joe Grant really branched out as a character. That was fantastic. But the story... it doesn't grab my attention and I just don't enjoy it as a lot of people do. Now my rating may be pretty harsh. I was thinking a 6.5 to a 7 out of 10. In my heart it's saying a 7 out of 10 but in my gut if I'm brutally honest I think it deserves a, a 6.5 out of 10 and that is what I'm gonna give it. It's got its good moments especially with Joe Grant but overall it's not a favourite story of mine by any means and not the best out of the set. So then, what is my final verdict on the Third Doctor Adventures Volume 1 set? Well, it's completely the opposite with me. A lot of people find Prisoners of the Lake bad and then the Havoc of Empires good. No, I'm completely the other way around. I think the Prisoners of the Lake is a great story, but the Havoc of Empires... I just can't get into it. I can't. I would love to get into this one. I would love to give it a 7, but that's just my heart, and that's not truthful. It is a 6.5 out of 10, and that's a, a very low rating, but it's the honest truth. 
So yeah, this is definitely not one of the best releases for 2015 in my opinion. But I'd say it's worth it for Prisoners of the Lake, but you may not like it as some people find it rather than an average story. So would I recommend it? If you can find it for a cheap price, like £15 on Amazon, which I've seen it for, then yeah, pick it up. £25 or £30 on the Big Finish website, I don't know what the price is. I don't think so really, I don't think it's worth it. I give the set a 7 out of 10. Yeah, I am slightly disappointed, especially with the Havoc of Empires. It could have been a lot better. Is it Pertwee back in action with a bang? Yeah, half and half really. He's back in action with Prisoners of the Lake, but Havoc of Empires. No, it's still an overrated story. Maybe a fifth listen. I may get into it. I might advance to a 7, but we have to wait and see on that. So thank you very much for watching my review of The Third Doctor Adventures Volume 1 set, and I will see you for the next one for Jago and Lightfoot and Strax. Hopefully that will be a much more positive review after The Havoc of Empires. Goodbye, and have a good one.